after studying this module you shall be able to first know the meaning of accounting equation learn how to formulate accounting equation identify the different components of accounting equation and analyzing the business transactions the accounting is purely based on the concept of separate legal entity it means the entity of business is totally different from the person who owns the business so the enterprise is liable to the owner even in the respect of capital contributed by him the enterprise may have also raised funds in the form of loan or even directly by purchase of goods on credit etc these outsiders will also have claim on the resources of the firm to the extent of their due amount it is so because the profit always belongs to the owner only total claims is equal to total resources total claims can be classified into owners which is capital and outsiders which is liability you can also call your total resources as an assets now let's come to the meaning of accounting equation accounting equation signifies that the claims against the entity are always equal to the resources of the entity the resources may be held by the entity in the form of cash inventory debtors building machinery etc the providers of funds have claim which may be divided into two categories first owner and outsiders at any point of time resources of the business entity must be equal to the claims of those who have financed these resources the owners and the outsiders are the providers of resources in the business where capital plus liabilities is equal to assets here is an accounting equation whose source is accounting by ca dr k m bansal the accounting equation is the relationship of assets and liabilities of the entity at the particular point of time since it depicts the components of balance sheet it is also called as balance sheet equation now let's come to the elements of accounting equation the accounting equation has three basic elements first capital now come to the capital the capital or the claim of the proprietor is called as capital it includes the initial and subsequent contribution made by the owner in the business as well as in the retained earnings the capital increases by the amount of profits generated and decreases by the losses it may be noted that when the owner withdraws money from the business for his personal use or takes other resources of the firm for the same then it is termed as drawings such drawings are ultimately deducted from the capital the capital may be in the form of cash goods or any other form if business expenses are paid by the proprietor out of his own pocket then also it is treated as capital contribution it is also called as internal liability second classification is liabilities it is an obligation of the entity in the favor of outsiders it involves future outflow of the resources of the entity it represents amount of money that the business owes to the parties other than the owner it may be in the form of bank loan or term loan taken from financial institution etc the liability also arise due to trade obligations like sundry creditors bills payable 
outstanding expenses etc on the basis of time period it may be divided into two categories namely current and non current liabilities now let's come to current liabilities usually a liability is classified as current liability if it is expected to be settled within 12 months from the date of its financial statements as per the note 3 of schedule 3 of companies act 2013 a liability shall be classified as current when it satisfies any of the following criteria out of which first is it is expected to be settled in the company's normal operating cycle an operating cycle is the time between the acquisition of assets for processing and the realization in the form of cash or cash equivalents where the normal operating cycle cannot be identified it is assumed to have duration of 12 months second it is held primarily for the purpose of being traded third it is due to be settled within 12 months after the reporting date or the company does not have an unconditional right to defer settlement of the liability for at least 12 months after the reporting date terms of the liability that could at the option of counter party result in its settlement by the issue of equity instruments which do not affect its classification the examples of current liabilities are creditors bills payable outstanding salaries short term borrowings that part of long term borrowings which are to be settled within 12 months or etc now let's come to non current liabilities all liabilities other than the current are called as non current liabilities the examples of non current liabilities are long term borrowings term loans etc now come to another classification of third category which are assets asset is a resource owned by the business with the purpose of using it for generating future profits this reflects the economic resources expressed in monetary terms the assets may be classified as tangible or intangible with limited life or unlimited life etc but the major classification is fixed and current assets now let's come to current assets usually an asset is classified as current if it is expected to be converted into cash within 12 months from the date of its financial statements as per note 1 of schedule 3 of companies act 2013 an asset shall be classified as current when it satisfies any of the following criteria first it is expected to be realized in or is intended for sale or consumption in the company's normal operating cycle next it is held primarily for the purpose of being traded then it is expected to be realized within 12 months after the reporting date or it is cash or cash equivalent unless it is restricted from being exchanged or used to settle a liability for at least 12 months after the reporting date the examples of current assets are cash balance bank balance debtors bills receivable stock 
short term advances outstanding income expenses paid in advance or etc now let's come to non current assets all assets other than the current are called as non current or fixed assets the examples of non current assets are building furniture plant goodwill patent etc now let's come to analysis of business transactions it is true that accounting equation remains balanced all the time it is so because any change resulting from the business transaction impacts the two sides or even one of the side of the accounting equation in such a manner that lhs remains equal to rhs on such basis these business transactions may be divided into three categories first affecting both sides next affecting lhs only next affecting rhs only now let's come to affecting both sides of accounting equation a business transaction may affect both sides of the accounting equation a transaction may affect assets on the one side and liabilities or capital on the other side the following are the examples first increase in assets and increase in liabilities first machinery purchased on credit raising bank loan next we come to decrease in assets and decrease in liabilities like take an example of repayment of loan or cash paid to creditor third we come to increase in assets and increase in capital for example additional capital introduced in cash or furniture purchased for business out of private resources by the owner now let's come to decrease in assets and decrease in capital for example cash withdrawn by owner out of business for personal use or stock destroyed by fire now let's come to increase in assets liabilities and capital for example building purchased for rupees 5 lakh out of which 2 lakh has been paid by owner and balance yet to be paid another example purchased a running business consisting of assets of rupees 4 lakh and liabilities of rupees 2 lakh 50000 for a purchase consideration of rupees 1 lakh 25000 now let's come to affecting one side of accounting equation a business transaction may affect the accounting equation in such a manner that only one side is affected it may be any of the following first take an example of transactions affecting assets only for example goods purchased for cash cash received from debtors furniture sold for cash now take an example of transactions affecting liabilities only for example bills payable issued to creditors bills payable dishonored interest component converted into loan another is transactions affecting capital only for example interest on capital allowed interest on drawings charged salary allowed to proprietor now come to limitations of accounting equation the accounting equation approach suffers from the following drawbacks first it can be used in case of every small business entities only next there are certain transactions the effect of which cannot be ascertained from accounting equation 
for example business expenses paid by proprietor out of his own pocket next sometimes the treatment is same in case of business as well as personal transactions for example the effect of salaries paid in cash and drawings is the same this difference cannot be discerned by the users of accounting information next this approach directly or indirectly contravenes the basic accounting principles it is due to the fact that each and every transaction has to be incorporated in accounting equation immediately after its occurrence without waiting for another now when wages are paid it is deducted from capital totally whereas the direct expenses should be added to the value of stock here the source is accounting by ca dr k m bansal now come to practical illustrations let's prepare an accounting equation on the basis of the following question the first point of the question is pramod started business with cash of 5 lakh he purchased goods for from raju for cash of 50000 sold goods to bhuvan costing rupees 20000 for cash and it sold it for rupees 25000 bought furniture for cash of rupees 15000 purchased goods on credit of rupees 35000 goods costing 5000 sold for cash at a cost plus 20% cash paid to creditors on account of rupees 20000 personal expenses paid out of firm's cash of rupees 16000 cash paid to creditors in full settlement of 14500 and depreciate furniture by 10% now let's present the last accounting equation in the suitable form of where capital plus liabilities is equal to cash plus stock plus furniture the treatment of first adjustment is 5 lakh of capital plus liability zero will be equal to 5 lakh of cash plus zero stock plus zero furniture second 5 lakh of capital plus zero liabilities which will give cash of rupees 4 lakh 50000 plus stock 50000 plus furniture zero third 5 lakh 5000 of capital plus zero liability will give you cash of rupees 4 lakh 75000 plus stock of rupees 30000 plus furniture zero fourth capital of 5 lakh 5000 plus liability of zero will give you cash of rupees 4 lakh 60000 plus stock of 30000 plus furniture of 15000 another fifth 5 lakh 5000 capital plus 35000 liabilities will give you 4 lakh 60000 of cash 65000 of stock plus 15000 of furniture next f part 5 lakh 6000 of capital plus 35000 of liabilities will give you cash of rupees 4 lakh 66000 plus stock of 60000 plus furniture of 15000 then come to the g part 5 lakh 6000 of capital plus 15000 liabilities will give you cash of 4 lakh 46000 plus stock of 60000 plus furniture of 15000 h part of capital 4 lakh 90000 plus 15000 of liability will give you cash of 4 lakh 30000 plus 60000 of stock plus 15000 of furniture then the i part will give you 4 lakh 90500 of capital plus zero liability which will give you cash of 4 lakh 15500 plus stock 
plus furniture 15,000. And I part will give you 4,89,000 capital plus zero liability which will give cash of 4,15,500 plus stock 60,000 plus furniture of 13,500. Now let's come to the balance sheet where on the liability side we have capital of total 4,89,000 and on the asset side we have cash of 4,15,500 stock 60,000, furniture of 13,500 which will amount to total again 4,89,000. Now let's prepare an accounting equation for the following transaction where the A part gives Anubhav started business with cash of rupees 5 lakh and goods of rupees 1 lakh. B. He purchased building for cash of rupees 2 lakh. C. He purchased goods from Tanya on credit for 50,000. D. Part. He sold goods on credit to Anish whose cost was 25,000 and he sold it for 36,000. Then paid insurance premium of rupees 3,000. Rent paid of 4,000. Depreciation on building 8,000. Cash withdrawn for personal use 20,000, salary is paid 6,000 and cash paid to Tanya on account of rupees 20,000, cash received from Anish rupees 30,000. Now let's come to its solution where again capital plus liabilities is equal to cash plus stock plus building plus debtors. Let's come to A part where 6 lakh of capital plus 0 liabilities will give you cash of 5 lakh plus stock of 1 lakh plus 0 depreciation plus 0 debtors. B part 6 lakh of capital plus 0 liabilities will give you 3 lakh of capital plus 1 lakh of stock plus 2 lakh of building plus 0 debtors. C part 6 lakh of capital plus 50,000 of liabilities will give you cash of 3 lakh plus stock of 1 lakh 50,000 plus buildings of 2 lakhs plus 0 debtors. Now come to D part 6 lakh 11,000 capital plus 50,000 liabilities will give 3 lakh of cash plus 1 lakh 25,000 of stock plus 2 lakh of building plus 36,000 of debtors. On E part, 6 lakh 8,000 of capital plus 50,000 of liabilities will give you 2 lakh 97,000 of cash plus 1 lakh 25,000 of stock plus 2 lakh of building plus 36,000 of debtors. Then on F part, 6 lakh 4,000 of capital plus 50,000 liabilities will give you around 2 lakh 93,000 of cash plus 1,25,000 of stock plus 2 lakh of building plus 36,000 of debtors. On G part, 5,96,000 of capital plus 50,000 of liabilities will give you 2,93,000 of cash plus 1,25,000 of stock plus 1,92,000 of building plus 36,000 of debtors. On H part, 5,76,000 of capital plus 50,000 of liabilities will give you 2,73,000 of cash plus 1,25,000 of stock plus 1,92,000 of building plus 36,000 of debtors. On I part, 5,70,000 of capital plus 50,000 of liability will give you 2,67,000 of cash plus 1,25,000 of stock plus 1,92,000 of building as well 36,000 of debtors. Now come to J part, 5,70,000 of capital plus 30,000 of liability will give you 2,47,000 of cash plus 1,25,000 of stock plus 1,92,000 of building as well 36,000 of again debtors. And on the K part, the capital of 5,70,000 plus 30,000 of liabilities will give you 
two lakh seventy seven thousand of cash plus one lakh twenty five thousand of stock plus one lakh ninety two thousand of building as well six thousand of debtors. Now let's come to balance sheet. Where on liability side we have capital of rupees five lakh seventy thousand, and on the creditors we have thirty thousand amount, which will total and sum up to rupees six lakh. On asset side we have cash of rupees two lakh seventy seven thousand, stock of one lakh twenty five thousand, building one lakh ninety two thousand, debtors of six thousand, which will give total of six lakh. Now on illustration third, let's prepare an accounting equation for the following transactions. Also prepare balance sheet for the last accounting equation. The first transaction is business commenced with capital of six lakh, machinery purchased for cash of thirty thousand, goods purchased for cash of forty thousand, goods purchased on credit of forty five thousand, furniture purchased on credit of thirty thousand. Paid to supplier twenty thousand, rent paid in cash ten thousand, salaries paid in cash eight thousand, drawings in cash twenty thousand, goods sold for cash cost in rupees thirty thousand for rupees forty five thousand, insurance premium paid in cash rupees five thousand, depreciate furniture by ten percent. Business expenses paid by proprietor out of his own pocket of four thousand, paid to supplier in full settlement of his account of twenty four thousand, depreciate machine by five percent, and paid to supplier of furniture in part payment of rupees ten thousand. Now let's come to the solution part. First transaction, six lakh. Plus zero plus zero liabilities will give you cash of six lakh only. Six lakh of capital will give you cash is equal to five five lakh seventy thousand plus machinery of thirty thousand. On C part, six lakh of capital will give you cash of five lakh thirty thousand plus stock of forty thousand plus machinery of thirty thousand. On D transaction, we have capital of six lakh. Forty-five thousand of creditors, which will give you cash of five lakh thirty thousand, plus stock of eighty-five thousand, plus machinery of thirty thousand. In E part, we have six lakh of capital, plus forty-five thousand of creditors, plus thirty thousand of liabilities, which will give you five lakh thirty thousand of cash, plus eighty-five thousand of stock, plus thirty thousand of furniture, plus thirty thousand of machinery. On F part, we have six lakh of capital plus twenty-five thousand of creditors plus thirty thousand liabilities, which will give you five lakh ten thousand of cash plus eighty-five thousand of stock plus thirty thousand of furniture plus thirty thousand of machinery. On G part, we have five lakh ninety thousand of capital plus twenty-five thousand of creditors plus thirty thousand of liabilities, which will give you five lakh cash, eighty-five thousand of stock. Plus thirty thousand furniture, plus thirty thousand of machinery. On H part, we have five lakh eighty-two thousand plus twenty-five thousand plus thirty thousand, which will give you a break of four lakh ninety-two thousand plus eighty-five thousand plus thirty thousand plus thirty thousand. On I part, we have five lakh sixty-two thousand of capital plus twenty-five thousand of creditors plus thirty thousand of liability, which will give you four lakh seventy-two thousand of cash. Eighty-five thousand of stock plus thirty thousand furniture plus thirty thousand. On J part, we have five lakh seventy-seven thousand of capital plus twenty-five thousand of creditors plus thirty thousand of liability, which will give you five lakh seventeen thousand plus fifty-five thousand plus thirty thousand plus again thirty thousand. On K part, we have five lakh seventy-two thousand of capital plus twenty-five thousand of creditors plus thirty thousand of liabilities. Which will give five lakh twelve thousand of uh, cash plus fifty five thousand of stock plus thirty thousand of furniture plus thirty thousand of debtors. On M part we have five lakh sixty nine thousand plus twenty five thousand plus thirty thousand, which will give cash of five lakh twelve thousand plus fifty five thousand plus twenty seven thousand plus thirty thousand of debtors. On N part we have five lakh seventy thousand of capital plus zero creditors plus thirty thousand of liability. 
which will give four lakh eighty eight thousand of cash plus fifty five thousand plus twenty seven thousand of furniture plus thirty thousand of debtors. On O part, we have five lakh sixty eight thousand five hundred of capital plus thirty thousand of liability, which will give four lakh eighty eight thousand of cash plus fifty five thousand of stock plus twenty seven thousand of furniture plus twenty eight five hundred of debtors. Then on P part, we have five lakh sixty eight thousand five lakh capital plus twenty thousand liabilities. Which will give four lakh seventy eight thousand of cash, plus fifty five thousand stock, plus twenty seven thousand of furniture, plus twenty eight five hundred of debtors. Now let's come to balance sheet part. On liability side, we have capital of five lakh sixty eight thousand five hundred, and on other creditors, we have amount of twenty thousand, which will total up to five lakh eighty eight thousand five hundred. And on asset side, we have cash of four lakh seventy eight thousand. Stock of fifty-five thousand, furniture of twenty-seven thousand, plant and machinery of twenty-eight five hundred, which will give you five lakh eighty-eight thousand five hundred total amount. Now let's uh, come to the computation of profit under accounting equation approach. There are three components of accounting equation, namely capital, liabilities, and assets. All the business transactions are incorporated using these three components immediately after their occurrence. Usually, profit is calculated by the comparison of opening and closing capital as the excess of later over the former. To illustrate, let us assume following terms: CO, LO, and AO are the opening balances of capital, liabilities, assets, respectively. Similarly, C1, L1, and A1 are the closing balances of. Now, profit may be calculated as follows, where profit will be equal to C1 minus C0. However, if there are drawings and/or additional capital introduced during the period under consideration, then profit will be calculated as follows, where profit will be equal to C1 minus C0 plus drawings minus additional capital. introduced now take an illustration here the following information is available in respect of business transactions of mr varad appearing at the beginning of the year here varad's capital loan amount is 1 lakh bills payable 1 lakh 40000 fixed assets 1 lakh 60000 stock of goods 1 lakh 20000 sundry debtors 1 lakh And cash and balances, bank balances are rupees sixty thousand. Mr. Varad also reports the following balances appearing as at the end of the year, where again loan is one lakh, bills payable one lakh sixty thousand, fixed assets one lakh forty four thousand, stock of goods one lakh eighty thousand, sundry debtors one lakh, and cash and bank balances one lakh twenty thousand. You are required to answer the following first using accounting equation. find out the opening capital that is co next what are the values of l1 and a1 at the end of the period next what is closing capital next calculate profits earned during the year if varad has introduced rupees 5000 as additional capital he has also used firm's cash amounting to rupees 21000 for his personal purposes Now let's come to the solution of A part that is determination of opening capital that is CO. Here AO that is opening assets will be equal to fixed assets plus stock plus sundry debtors plus cash plus bank balances, which will give you rupees one lakh sixty thousand plus rupees one lakh twenty thousand plus one lakh plus sixty thousand, which will amount to rupees four lakh forty thousand. Now let's come to LO opening liabilities, which is equal to loan plus bills payable. That is, rupees one lakh plus one lakh forty thousand is equal to two lakh forty thousand. We know that as per accounting equation, capital plus liabilities are always equal to assets. Therefore, capital is equal to assets minus liabilities. Therefore, CO is equal to AO minus LO. That is. Rupees four lakh forty thousand minus two lakh forty thousand, which will give you rupees two lakh. Now let's come to the B part of determination of values of L one and A one. 
here a1 that is closing assets is equal to fixed assets plus stock plus sundry debtors plus cash and bank balances where rupees 1 lakh 44000 plus 1 lakh 80000 plus 1 lakh plus 1 lakh 20000 will amount to rupees 5 lakh 44000 now l1 that is closing liabilities is equal to loan plus bills payable that is rupees 1 lakh plus 1 lakh 60000 will give you rupees 2 lakh 60000 and on the c part let's determine the closing capital we know that capital is equal to assets minus liabilities so c1 is equal to a1 minus l1 that is rupees 5 lakh 44000 minus 2 lakh 60000 which will give you 2 lakh 84000 now let's come to the d part of computation of profit profit is equal to c1 minus co plus drawings minus additional capital introduced which is 2 lakh 84000 minus 2 lakh plus 21000 minus 5000 which will give you rupees 1 lakh now let's come to summary first point it is the most traditional method of accounting and recording which has become defunct now next the mathematical expression of dual aspect concept is called as accounting equation next it is also called as balance sheet equation as it depicts the components of balance sheet next capital assets and liabilities are its three elements next accounting equation signifies that the claims against the entity are always equal to the resources of the entity next the providers of funds may be owner or outsiders then the accounting equation remains balanced all the time the profit earned can be calculated under accounting equation approach in the following manner where profit is equal to c1 minus co plus drawings minus additional capital introduced then the accounting equation approach suffers from the drawbacks like it can be used in case of every small business entities only the effect of some transactions cannot be ascertained from the accounting equation the basic limitation of accounting equation is that the effect of each transaction is incorporated through capital.